This is the rules of engagement card that I was issued for our, our deployment to Iraq. And this is held up as the gold standard of conduct in the occupation right now. Nothing on this card prevents you from using deadly force to defend yourself. Enemy military and paramilitary forces may be attacked subject to the following instructions. Positive identification is required prior to engagement. Positive identification is reasonable certainty, and that's in quotes on the card, that your target is a legitimate military target. Good afternoon. My name is John Michael Turner. I current re currently reside in Burlington, Vermont. I served with Kilo Company 3rd Battalion, 8th Marines as an automatic machine gunner. There's a term, uh, once a Marine, always a Marine, but there's also the term, eat the apple, F the core. I don't work for you no more. <laughs> served three deployments with Kilo Company, 3rd Battalion, 8th Marines, one of which was in Haiti, the other two were in Iraq, uh, in between Fallujah and Abu Ghraib the first time, and in downtown Ramadi at the government center the second time. Gonna be a video of, um, my exo or executive officer at the time of Kilo Company, and in this video he states, um, I think I just killed half the population of Northern Ramadi, F the red tape. Can you read? I think I just killed half the population of Northern Ramadi, fuck the red tape. All right, this video is, um, is the after effects of what my exo had stated. Um, we had gone into a two hour long firefight and um, it was over for quite some time, but he still felt the need to go ahead and drop a 500-pound laser-guided uh, missile on it, and this is the after effects of it. Drink fucking coffee and then come back. Take a fucking nap. Upon arrival to Ramadi in March 2006, we had gotten our rules of engagement brief at Camp Ramadi. Uh, just after we had gotten that brief, brief our uh, first sergeant had pulled my platoon aside and stated, uh, if you feel threatened in any way, shape, or form, take care of the threat and we'll deal with it later. With that being said, mistakes were made on several occasions. Uh, one incident was uh, this guy we called Mr. Wilson. Uh, my post was post alpha at the government center in the southwest corner, and his house was directly across the street. We had a high suicide vehicle borne IED threat that day, and this car came running around the corner. And I fired one 50 caliber machine gun round at his direction, and it ricocheted off the ground through the floorboard of the car, through his shin, and then through the roof. Um, the car immediately came to a stop, and Outside of the car came seven of his daughters, including Mr. Wilson himself. A laser, a laser guided bomb. I'm sorry I didn't show that, but please play this. That was done on the uh, Ministry of Health building. This building was still in use. There were still people that went there. Um, and that was a missile that just went into it. But back to where I... For, can you please play the, uh, the next picture? Oh, this is another video of, um, that is the site, looking down the site of a 50 caliber machine gun. For those of you who don't know, the round is about six inches long and the projectile is about an inch and a half long. There are many different types of rounds. Um, the one that was shot at Mr. Wilson was a slap round, which has a polyurethane base and a titanium tip. When the projectile exits from the barrel of the 50 caliber machine gun, it spreads open like that. So it'll go into your body, leaving a hole about four inches and exit, um, leaving you with nothing. When mistakes were made, we carried drop weapons. Please go to the next picture. These weapons right here were taken from the Iraqi police. Uh, back during our first deployment. And this is just an example that we would take their weapons and carry them around with us in case we did mess up and shot the wrong person. This is what happens when you get hit with a 50 caliber. For those of you who don't know, that is brains. Um, that was not my kill, that was one of my friends. But uh, that did happen on my deployment to Iraq. 
That is a man's face. On, on April 2nd, 2005, at Abu Ghraib, we had a very highly coordinated attack on us. And uh, the next day, we went ahead and had to uh, search the premises for any remains. Um, and obviously, that face, or that part of the face was found and put on top of a Kevlar so could, a picture could be taken of it. We had a mortar attack at uh, Camp India, which was right in between Camp Fallujah and Abu Ghraib. And this was a 12-year-old worker who was building our camp for us, uh, and he took a piece of shrapnel to the head. This man right here was my third confirmed kill. As you can see, he was riding his bicycle. This, later on in the day, we went ahead, and uh, we had CBS, Laura Logan, with us, but she was with the other squad, and so she wasn't with us. So myself and two other people went ahead and took out some individuals because we were excited about the firefight we had just gotten into and we didn't have a cameraman or woman with us. With that being said, any time we did have embedded reporters with us, our actions would change drastically. We never acted the same. We were always on key with everything, played, did everything by the books. And his body was dragged about 10 feet to the right of him where his body was thrown behind a rock wall and his bicycle was thrown on top of him. House raids. <coughs> because we were a grunt battalion, we were responsible for going on several patrols. Uh, a lot of the raids and patrols we did were at the night, around three o'clock in the morning, around there. Um, and what we would do was just kick in the doors and terrorize the families. That was an image taken around three o'clock in the morning through night vision goggles. And that is uh, the segregation of the women and children and the men. Um, if, if the men of the household were giving us problems, we'd go ahead and take care of them any way we felt necessary, whether it be choking them or slamming their head against the walls. If you go back to that one picture, that was one man that wasn't taking, uh, that was taken care of in a very bad way because of all the, the wiring that he had, it would be considered an IED making material. Um, on my wrist, there is Arabic for FU. I got that put on my wrist just two weeks before we went to Iraq because that was my choking hand. And anytime I felt the need to take out aggression, I would go ahead and use it. Um, I'll, actually, I'll talk about this one. This is um, after uh, one, of, one of the guys in a uh, weapons company had gotten shot. Uh, this is a way that we would take out our aggression. For those of you who don't know, it is illegal to shoot into a mosque unless you were taking fire from it. There was no fire that was taken from that mosque. It was shot into because we were angry. The reason I am doing this today is not only for myself and for the rest of society to hear, but it's for all those who can't be here to talk about the things that we went through, talk about the things that we did. Next image. Those four crosses and this memorial service were for the five guys in Kilo Company, 3rd Battalion, 8th Marines that we lost. Throughout our, our unit, we had 18 that got killed. With that being said, that is my testimony. I just want to say that I am sorry for the hate and destruction that I have inflicted on innocent people, and I'm sorry for the hate and destruction that others have inflicted on innocent people. At one point, it was okay, but reality has shown that it is not, and that this is happening, and that until people hear about what is going on with this war, it will continue to happen, and people will continue to die. Not only are the misuse of rules of engagement in Iraq indicative of supreme strategic incompetence. They are also a moral disgrace, and they're just one of the many reasons why the troops should be withdrawn immediately from Iraq. Thank you. It would be a mistake to think that the solution to this problem would be a tighter restriction or, you know, or more effective ROE. The problem is the occupation. Such violence itself 
cannot be restrained, cannot be contained with rules of engagement, that when your life is in danger, it does not matter what the rules of engagement are, that the problem is the occupation itself. And it's time to bring the troops home now. Thank you very much.